Hey guys, it's Randy here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a replacement hub assembly. This offers the eight on six and a half inch bolt pattern, has half inch studs, designed for use on 7,000 pound axles. Now, general hub and drums, there's not a big difference in them from manufacturer to manufacturer. The biggest difference, what we've got here, we put it together and it's pre-greased. It's going to save you a lot of messy work. Generally, when doing a hub exchange or a hub swap, you're going to be taking the old one off. And then as you put the new one on, you've got to pack your bearings. You've got to drive the seal in the back. With this setup, it's all going to come pre-greased. It uses a blue marine grade grease. So you're going to get higher corrosion resistant properties with that than we get out of a standard high temp grease. And it makes the job really easy. Basically, once we have that old one off, just going to clean up your spindle. It's a number 42 spindle is what it's designed for. Check it for heat cracks, check it for signs of deformation, but as long as it's nice and clean, you're going to pull the cap off the back of this hub, slide it right on, put your outer bearing in, and then just use your thrust washer, you'll use your nut to go back on there and whatever keeper you had. So outside of the process of lubing and greasing that we don't have to do with this one, it's going to be an identical swap to what you're used to with just standard hubs and drums. Now, of course, it's going to be a heavy duty cast steel, has that black finish on it. It's going to help resist corrosion and things like that. You know how these heat up over time and eventually they all wind up with a little bit of rust on them. You're also going to get eight new lug nuts. Of course, these are on here backwards. That's just the way it's shipped. This will go on with the bevel facing in. But if you've got any of them that are damaged or any of them that have kind of been, been rounded off a little bit, you're just going to get that complete replacement. It's also going to come with a new grease cap. Now this one happens to be a solid grease cap, not for use with Easy Lube Hubs, but we certainly will have Easy Lube Hubs available as well with that black plastic cap in the end where you can pull it out and access that Zerk. A very close competitor to this would be the Dexter Hub and Drum Assembly. Essentially that one does not come pre-greased, so you have to go through the work of getting it all greased and everything. But it also seems to be a lot more expensive than what we get out of this one. I think we've put together a good assembly here, save you some time, save you some money. Now in working with customers, get a lot of good feedback from these. It's just a little bit easier, quicker process. They like the fact that it saves them having to go to a shop and having it done. Essentially, shop cost when this is easy as it is to do, as long as you've got a jack and a jack stand and you can get that tire off, all you're gonna need really is a screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and maybe like a pair of channel locks for that bigger nut there. Outside of that, you're in good shape. You save yourself a lot of money and not have to go through the shop cost. Um, I often hear that they work just as well and they're just as high a quality as anything else out there available on the market. And overall, customers just seem to be really pleased with it. Uh, the common questions that I get from customers on it, what size spindle is it? It's a number 42 spindle, I think I said that before. But also, what size tire? And what we're going to be looking at here is a 16 inch rim or larger. And that's going to be very typical of this kind of brake assembly. And speaking of brake assemblies, Inspect those when you have this off. If you put on a new hub, put on your new drum, and then your brakes fail, well, you're just gonna repeat this whole process again. You have to take everything back apart. And when we get to this point, we're looking at a five brake flange. So five studs that are gonna hold the entire brake assembly on there. A couple of butt connectors. It's a really easy and quick switch. We'll throw a part number up. That way you can see the self-adjusting 7,000 pound brake assemblies, five bolt flange. That'll be for the left and the right. You always want to replace them in pairs. You don't want to just replace one side. And I think with going with that entire replacement assembly, you're getting new shoes, you're getting new backing plates, you're getting new wiring, new magnets, getting all the new hardware. So really, once you have a new hub and drum on there with a new brake assembly, your axle is essentially brand new. Now the thing I like about this setup is essentially we get brand new surfaces for our brakes to make to and work on. 
We also get a brand new surface for our magnet and our brakes to grab onto, applying those brakes. So it's definitely gonna make the system more efficient. You can see this is the surface the magnet rides on. This outer area is the surface in which your brake shoes are gonna ride on. This just helps to ensure that any potential braking force that our brakes can generate, we're able to use. So, you know, a 7,000 pound axle, we're probably gonna have a couple of them on there. The loads are gonna get heavier. Those brakes are really important to get everything slowed down safely. Now the benefit you get with a pre-greased hub is that you know that the bearings are packed properly. Some people are kind of unsure whether they're actually packing the bearings the right way or not. It can save you the money when you have to run out and buy grease or buy a bearing packer. So I like this solution and I also like how it's going to show up to your door. It's going to be in a nice box. It's going to be wrapped in a plastic bag. But our hub is also capped. You can see here, I'll pull this inside off. As I do that, you'll notice it completely seals that seal area. We've got one on the other side too. And essentially that's gonna keep any dirt, grime, or debris from getting in there during transportation. The front side cap, also gonna pop off. Then you're gonna have your outer bearing there. We're gonna take that out, just set it aside for now. This portion we can get installed onto the spindle. When installing it, we're just gonna guide it on the spindle. And this has been designed to work with a number 42 spindle. It's very common. Just squeeze it on just like that. Now we'll take that outer bearing. It's gonna go in. Might have to give it a little bit of a wiggle to get it started. You don't wanna force it. Then you'll wanna grab your old axle hardware. Bushing, then our nut. We're going to begin to tighten that down. That's going to compress everything for us. Now I like to tighten it down pretty snug. That's going to bind that up just a little bit. Then we'll back it off to where we get a nice free movement in it. Just like that would be pretty ideal. At that point, it's going to be time to replace your keeper. Ours uses a spring style keeper like this. Yours may have a castle nut with a cotter pin that goes through. Just reuse whatever you had. And of course, the removal process is just going to be the opposite of the installation process. Let's see if we can get that lined up. All right. At that point, we'll grab our dead blow hammer. We can knock our dust cap on. And we'll just drive that in solid. And that's really all there is to it. As you can see, if you've ever done a hub job before, repack bearings, it can get pretty messy. In this case, everything's already there. I really like the way this works. Also, as we mentioned before, a lot more cost effective than what we seem to see out of the Dexters when we get them. So overall, I think it's gonna be an excellent assembly, good hum and drum, and get you right back on the road.